Hamilton joining the show at 12.30 to talk a little Guardians. We'll spend 10 minutes here about their opening day roster. Jay, the Guardians made it official over the weekend. Naming their 26-man roster, Miles Straw was optioned to AAA. He cleared waivers and will start the season in Columbus. What are your overall thoughts on the Guardians' 2024 opening day roster? I, I like Miles um, personally as a guy. I think he's a great guy. Um, he just – now, he did do some work on his body in the offseason – and the first thing I noticed when he walked into our interview room in Arizona was, damn, this dude has put in the work. Like, he physically, he's rebuilt his frame. He's added 10 pounds of muscle. It's, it's, he, he looked much better. Um, but I think the Guardians, there is a clear and obvious shift in philosophy going on with the Guardians organization right now. They thought, in defiance of conventional wisdom, that they could small ball their way to a World Series. Uh, they came damn close a couple of years ago. They had the fewest strikeouts. They didn't hit for power. They were 26th or 7th in the league in home runs. They stole a lot of bases. Then last year, something really odd happened. Not only did their home run output go down to dead last in the league by a lot, but their base running production went way down. Just stop stealing bases. And I, I didn't understand that. Like, you've you got to have one or the other. You, you've got to have one or the other. And Miles Straw could provide the base running. But for some reason, they weren't running nearly as aggressively on the bases as they did in 2022. And I could, I never did figure it out. I can't understand it to this day. I don't know why they suddenly stopped running. When the trend in the league was for everybody to run more. Remember the bigger bases? Yep. Made it a little bit easier to steal the base. The percentage of stolen Pace bases clock. went way up. Their production went way down. Um, so, it, to me, the writing on the wall was on the wall in the clubhouse when Straw arrived, even though he had put in the work and he looked different. He didn't hit any home runs last year. Their outfield had, I think, one of the most historically low home run outputs in the history of the game of the live ball era for a major league outfield. They just didn't hit home runs. I think Vote came in. Now, I don't know if he's the guy driving the ship on this. I have to think he is because he's the only guy that changed. Mm -hmm. The GM is the same. All the major pieces are the same. But, and nobody really came out and embraced it as much as Will Brennan did. Will Brennan, we've had him on this show a number of times. I love Will. And I'm glad to see that he right now is penned in as the opening day starter in right field. He didn't hide from it at all. I asked him, is there... Has, is there a vocalized shift in philosophy in the organization. And he's like, oh, yeah. Like, so he said the quiet part out loud. Maybe teams don't like to, you know, telegraph that stuff, but he had no problem with it. He said, yeah, we've talked about it. We've, he, like, look, look what's going on in baseball. We've got to hit more home runs. So what that means is you're not looking at every swing as gold currency. Like, that's what they were doing before. I've got to put bat on ball. I can't swing and miss. Well, when you take the swing and miss idea out, I know myself as a player all through my career. When I went up to the plate with the idea that I'm taking hacks, I was most productive in the power game. And that's what they have to do. And, remember, and I think they've done that. So for Straw, he doesn't fit in with where they're going. And, and you know, Jay, listen, I, I think Will, he said himself when we aired that, that uh, interview that you did, he said, listen, I got to go up there. It's a, di it's a different day. I got to get my cuts in. I, we, it, it's you got to be able to hit the long ball. And and remember last year, it, it was even a thing. If you went up there and you was in in the Guardians organization and you went up there swinging at first pitches, if you didn't go deep in the count, you might be sitting next to Tito. That's exactly right. <laughs> if you didn't go deep in that count, they looking at you like, hey. Yep. How many cuts did you get up there? Like, uh, we need you to, we need to see some pitches here. Right. And that's their mentality. And gee, you can still have that mentality, by the way. You can still be judicious at the plate and have great pitch discipline and spit on pitches that are on the, on the edges. On the, on, on the fringes. But when you get late in the count, you can't do that. No. You've got to swing and you've got to swing away. I make a prediction right now. The Guardians will hit... 30 to 40 more home runs this year than they did last year. They will strike out probably 10% to 20% more. I'm okay with that. That's, fine. That's where the game is played today. It's fine. So for me, I've I've heard a few of Stephen Vogt's interviews. And the thing that always... You like them? 
I do like him, and and I like I like his approach to the game. I love him. one. I think the fact that he just pretty much got finished playing baseball, I think it helps. Um, no matter what the sport is, I am really into these managers and head coaches that's former players and not too far removed from the game. Young, but one in of the touch. things, right? One of the things he talked about was put more emphasis on the long ball, put more emphasis on being a team that can hit home runs, right? He talked about having this team uh, going against what they did again with Tito deeper into the counts, but taking, taking more uh, hacks at the first pitch earlier in the count, being more, more aggressive earlier in the count. Sometimes that's the best pitch you're going to see. I don't know much about, about a lot of these young prospects, but the Chase, the, the louder guy, right. he's a center fielder with power. And this is why I, I was scratching my head. If he's a center fielder with power, and we all know that we lacked power from all the outfielders combined last year, and then every time you as the manager get in front of the media and you speak too well, it's about you know having more power, more emphasis on the long ball and being more aggressive, then why is it that one of your top prospects who's a power hitter is not on your opening day lineup. Now, right. Bull has tried to educate me a little bit. About, he'll be he'll be here. There's some service time rules that June first th- that that you know plays a part into why Which they I hate, make certain the decisions that they make. But I mean, I don't really know what to expect outside of the guys I do know, Jose Ramirez and and Josh Naylor and Stephen Kwan. I got some young guys I'm a fan of, Gabriel Arias, Bo Naylor. That's my boy. You know, hopefully those two dudes can live up to their potential, and then we get some younger prospects in here. That can um that can help out, but I want to see this team hit more home runs. I think that if you start hitting more home runs, of course, like the fans are excited. This team is more exciting to watch. You you'll have more people going to the games. The pitching is gonna do what the pitching always does. Yeah, I'm not really worried about. They've got to stay healthy. You know, but I am really interested to see on how this team uh, responds to their new, fresher, younger. Uh, 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 manager versus than what we seen last year. Well, yeah, I am too. You know, Jay, like, you know, there's a certain thing to be said for, um, right? You want to see you 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 want to see uh, Manzardo. You want to see guys like that. You want to see Delauder. But there is a certain thing to be said for guys that they they need to take a look at as well. Like, sure. there's some guys that may be in the pecking order. They need to make a decision on. Right? I need to let me like Rocchio. I I didn't know. Like, I'm like, okay. I was c- kind of surprised he made the the, the roster. You got to take a look at some of these guys in order to figure out. And if they're not the guys, if they don't have any options left for it, they're not going to the minors. You can move them aside and bring somebody up. Um, for me, I'm glad that Stephen Volk made a, a move with uh, with, with uh, Straw in, in center field because it signifies that it's a new philosophy. And there's a lot of times when you're a new manager, you could, you could come in and just be like, I'm going to do status quo for a little bit just so I don't ruffle no feathers, right. keep everything cool, and then I'll, I'll start with my program mid through, way through the season. I like the fact that they say, no, nah, we're going to get Freeman out there. We're going to get a lot of these guys, and we're going to take a look at them, and I'm going to base them on the merit that I'm looking at them. So now you got a position in center field where we're going to give you a shot if you don't do something. Next man up. That's right. Next man up. I like it. Yeah, I, I would, I'm with you. I applaud votes. Uh, I don't want to say courage, but his aggressiveness. Mm-hmm to come in here to a team that I, last year, let's face it, they woefully underperformed. It was largely due to the fact that the pitching staff was decimated with injuries. They finished below 500. That's not a characteristic of a Tito Francona-led team. They finished below the Detroit Tigers. At the end of the year, the Tigers surged, got hot, and passed them. Guardians were third last year. But you look back to the core of the team is essentially very similar to what it was in 22 when they made a nice little playoff run. Mm-hmm. So I think for me... I was, I was afraid that Vote was going to come in and say, let's play at status quo, let's keep Straw in center, let's keep Arias at short, and let's see. He came in and said, no, no, not that's cool. not good enough. This team needs poked. So they took two starters. It's my understanding that Straw, who accepted the assignment, by the way, to, to Columbus, the AAA team, so he's not in the mix, but Arias will not be the opening day starting shortstop. That's crazy. Now, to me, that is... That's a titanic shift for this organization because he's been mentioned going back to, you know, after Lindor, well, yep. he's, gonna, he's next, he's coming, he's in the pipeline. And last year when they made the trade to the Dodgers to clear the shortstop position for him, they, they gave him every opportunity yep. to prove that this job is his. And he hit about 198 or 200 or whatever right. he hit. He shows flashes of still being a very good player. But you know what I said about the Cavs and how you evaluate a team? I do the same thing when I evaluate a player. 
What's their floor? What's their ceiling? Mm -hmm. And I think his floor is down here and his ceiling's up here. That's too big of an area. You're going to get too much inconsistency. I need a guy whose ceiling is here and his floor is here. They're close. So you you can put him in at every day shortstop and know that he's going to hit at least 270. He's going to steal some bases. He's going to flash a lot of leather. And from time to time, he'll run into one and give you a long ball. But I, I think that what, what, he, what they're saying is, we've seen you and we've seen straw. The sample size is big enough. We know who you are. We don't know who Rokio is going to be every day. And we don't know who somebody else might be in center. Delo- you know, one of these other guys that are in the pipeline. Find out who they are. And then if they don't measure up, like you said, next man up. Let's go. But winning breeds winning. So it's very important this team gets off to a hot start. By the way, I'm still not convinced. On, I, I don't think it's coming. I haven't heard anything like this. But I'm, I'm still nervous that we're going to have a pre-opening day trade with Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber's like, in the last Thursday? year's team control. What? By Thursday? Yes. I'm nervous by, about that. Because here's the thing. They have to decide at some point he's gone. At right. some point, unless they're at the break in first place or within striking distance. But if you ride it out with him, you get nothing for him. I, and you know, I thought it was, I, I think it's very ironic that once again, for the fifth straight year, we talk about trading him. He's getting, he's getting the opening day start. And look at his, <laughs> his last two performances in Arizona. He's been old Shane Bieber. He's been Cy Young Award Shane Bieber. And what scares me about that is if there were concerns from teams, and there were, about his arm because of the way he pitched last year with the injuries, he's erasing any and all doubt by he's, his velocity is up again. And we're going to have Tom Hamilton on later in the show, so we'll talk more about that with Tom. And when, and when is I don't the, think they're going to trade him. I've just been a fan of this organization of for happened. long enough. Yeah. I know that it's an option. And if, if where they're sitting today, they don't think they can make a, a run at the division. And if they're thinking that, I don't know how they're getting to that conclusion. Then they may make a move on opening day if they can get a lot of prospects for McNuggets, yeah. when are we going to do our, our predictions for uh, win totals for the Guardians? Uh, we'll do some prop bets on player stuff tomorrow. Wednesday and Thursday we'll do our win over. All right, I'm not going to be over. here. So I, I was texting with a friend of mine today who works at ESPN. He's a Guardians fan. I've been here 83. And, 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 and this, this goes to what I said about the Cavs a little while ago. We're, we're, we're debating win total. And I said, I know this sounds like a cop-out, but I'm anywhere from 75 to 90. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's like, it's like the, wow, well, you that's know. best case and worst case scenario. If you throw a wide enough net, you're bound to get it right. And I understand that. But see, here's the problem for me. I don't know about Shane Bieber. Or I, Class A. Last year, they were within a couple of games in Minnesota, and they dealt their best starting pitcher heck, away. Heck, they got Carrasco in the starting. He's, he's and in the And by the way, Carrasco's been okay. And yeah. I watched Cookie throw down in Arizona. I think he's still got some life to him. I do, but yeah, we'll see. he's a fifth starter and he's a bridge to get Gavin Williams back. But so I don't know. But then he said, no, no, no. You know that we don't do that. What's the win total? And I came back with 88. So I, I'm, I'm still optimistic on the high side. I'm well, wait, Vegas has him at 79 and a half. I'm going to wait mine out. So. Wow, 79 and a half. Yeah. See, and I would take the more Guardians that. with Tom Hamilton coming up in about half an hour. There's also more Guardians mm. talk tonight, 3 o'clock, the inaugural Ultimate Guardians show with Bull and Zach. Mizell, Mizell, Mizell. I don't remember it's which It's Mizell, one. isn't it? Yeah, both said it wrong the other day, and now it's stuck in my head the wrong way. Zach Mizell and Adam the Bull. Three o'clock By the today. way, you're not going to find a better no, tandem. Best tandem in the city. Of guys to talk baseball I, I, just about anywhere. No. Bull is as knowledgeable a baseball guy as I know. You could nerd and out And Zach this. is Zach just is tremendous. Yeah. Like, I hope Guardians fans realize how lucky. Same thing with our Cavs lineup and our Browns lineup. These shows are the amount of quality that we're throwing at our viewers right now is unbelievable. So but bad. watch this if you're a Guardians fan. 3 o'clock today for the Guardians, 5 o'clock for G. Is that the very first show. one? Very first one That's- today.